This is a graph of how well the Z3s were doing until the wheel started slipping. <laughs> makes, this makes it look like the wheel fell off. <laughs> no, we work really hard to take the wheel off. And that's what this video is about. We are deep down a rabbit hole to solve a problem. And I think it's interesting. And usually what I think is interesting turns into an episode that you guys like. So this is the wheel that goes in the Z3 fire and it has to be slippy and grippy. And I've made some content about that happening, but we are trying to design a wheel that's going to work really well for 10 and 11 millimeter. And so we have a 3D printed wheel that's a little bit fatter so that 11 mil rope would go inside of the wheel. And then we have the CNC'd one. And then we're gonna get about three more and find the perfect wheel, but you have to be able to take the original wheel off and put these on. So right now, this is what, well, that's a done one. <laughs> okay, here is one that is not, we haven't touched yet. So you can see here that the wheel as a rivet holding it on, and you're not exactly taking that off. It takes two actions <laughs> to open this up. Uh, Line Grip Incorporated, the European distributor, came up with the idea to put a screw in the spindle. And so you tap the spindle, you drill this out, tap the spindle, put a screw in, and that is, makes it so you can replace the wheel because this is the wear part. When you repel, you'll wear out the wheel like you would your Grigri, except you can replace it. You don't have to send it back to the manufacturer, not have your tool for, one to some however many weeks and then wait for us to put on another wheel when it's literally as simple as unscreen it yourself and screen it back in in the field this is such a good idea that all the future units that are coming from awa are coming with a screw but we have about 100 units out here in the us that are z3s that uh need to be converted and it's very interesting as i watched chase basically figure out how to drill a hole straight down the spindle. I think it's interesting if you're using this device to understand how it works, because I like understanding how gear works. Let me show you the inside of this wheel. So this spindle has two flat edges and this wheel has two flat edges. And so the wheel is being spun by the spindle when the, and there we go, it goes one way, but not the other. And the screw is just lightly holding it on there. And the screw is in the spindle and this is on there and so the screw is not turning ever differently relative to the wheel please use a screw but there's no screw in here the wheels on the spindle it, it cannot come off and if the spindle were to magically disappear uh, i don't even know how to simulate that the wheel's not big enough to come out of this when your rope's in there so it's actually relatively safe and we are going to be certifying these devices and until they're certified then please use a backup. You gotta look at how much space is between this and the wheel. This isn't even the wider wheel. This is not coming off that spindle. You're also gonna have a fatter wheel and you're gonna have a rope in there and you're gonna have a screw, it's not coming off. So I feel good about that. Would you like to see how they go on? First step is drilling your pilot hole. So when we're looking at that uh, rivet in the middle of the wheel, we need to make sure that we're drilling directly through the center of that. And so to start that off, we use a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. And I designed this jig to hold that drill bit in the exact center of that rivet. And that pilot hole is going to guide all of our drill bits going forward. Why do you have four of them here? Step one is the 2.5 millimeter pilot. Step two is actually getting rid of that rivet. And that, it's a eight millimeter rivet. Um, so I have this fixture, uh, which has a eight millimeter hardened steel bushing in there, which is perpendicular to the plane of the wheel and coaxial with the shaft. And you can do this with plastic because you have the metal insert? Precisely. And yeah. why does it look like an eyeball? So that it doesn't spin. That hole is to provide room for the metal chips to have somewhere to go. Rev one of this fixture did not have as large <laughs> of a hole and the metal just dug itself into the plastic. After drilling out the rivet, we need to tap the shaft. First, starting with a five millimeter tap drill uh, because we are using an M6 bolt because it fits nicely with the eight millimeter hole that the rivet leaves behind. And now we have the pilot hole for our M6 tap. Got a 6.1 millimeter bushing uh, in this jig. So gonna go ahead and place that on. And I have a tapered tap. Um, I'm gonna give it a little bit of WD-40 just so it cuts nice. Back off to clear the chips. That out. 
Now that we have that hole started, um, I don't need the jig anymore to keep it straight because the previous threads will guide me. So I'm gonna to switch to the bottoming tap uh, and that'll get us down all the way to the bottom of that hole. Now with that hole tapped, we're ready to chamfer the wheel. Spins, closes, and we have just a sliver of clearance. In case you made it through a video and you don't even know what this is, I'll at least show you. Uh, that goes on there, that goes on there. And it is a drill powered pulley and I forgot my drill. Oh, hey, hey, that's convenient. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> I do like this thing. What's neat is that line grip helped come up with the idea to put the screw in. We're able to alter our units. Awa is making the other units uh, with this design so we don't have to tap them and they're gonna to continue to get better because we have other ideas as things go on. They're not PPE rated yet, but we're working on that. So the whole point of this isn't just to be able to replace the wear part easily. It's the fact that we can put or give you any wheel you want. And if we can find a sweet one that does 10 and 11 mil on all the ropes, that would be mission accomplished. But we have a wheel in my hand here that works for 11 to a half inch row, 12.7 millimeters. And I know arborists have been very interested in having one of these work on the ropes that they want to use. So some, we just actually had some people here who asked, would it work on eight mil? And I'm like, I can make you a wheel. So I like that as an option. It's pretty cool, the collaborative effort put into these uh, drill powered pulleys.